In this video, we will have a look at all the options available to you in the 3D Roughing Toolpath. We'll demonstrate two practical ways to set up and then preview the tooling. A 3D Roughing Toolpath is used when carving 3D parts to clear away excess material when the part is too deep or it is unsafe for the finishing tool to clear all the material away in one single pass. To get us started, we'll need to open up our 3D Roughing Toolpath dialog and that's located under this icon right here. Once that open, we're going to have the option to choose what kind of cutter we'd like to use for our roughing toolpath. In this case, we have an end mill that's a quarter inch in diameter. If we need to, we can go ahead and select a different tool from our tool database. This will show us all of the tools that we have set up for the chosen material and the machine that we have. On our left hand side, we have all of our different tools that we already have set up. And on the right hand side, we have the geometry and the feeds and speeds set for this particular tool. If you'd like more information on how to use your tool database, there'll be a related video below. I'm going to go ahead and select this tool. The next option I have is the machining limit boundary. I have the choice of the model boundary. And the model boundary is comprised of any 3D contents boundary I have in my composite view. In this case, I only have one piece of 3D content, so the boundary will be around that. But let's say I had two different pieces of 3D content that were in separate areas, then that boundary would be created around those two separate pieces of clip art. I can use the material boundary which is obviously the boundary of my material. I can use a selected vector. So if I happen to have some vectors created, I can go ahead and choose that. And I can limit my tool path to inside that vector or that series of vectors. I can also select a level. So if I have 3D content that's been put on to a particular level and I only want to create a roughing toolpath for the content that's on those, then I can go ahead and choose that level from this drop down. For right now, I'm going to go back to model boundary. I can also choose a boundary offset. And this will allow me to cut outside of my selected boundary a little bit farther if I'd like to based on the number I have in this field. So for instance, if I wanted to cut outside of this boundary or this model boundary by a quarter inch, I could add a quarter inch in there. And this is quite helpful if I want to ensure that my finishing tool has room to fit in to do its work. The machining allowance is the material allowance I'm going to be leaving behind for my finishing tool to cut away. When we look at the next section, we have our roughing strategy. We have two different strategies that we can choose from, Z-Level and 3D Raster. First of all, we'll take a look at the, the Z-Level options. When you're choosing a Z-Level roughing strategy, you're going to be pocketing down pockets that are equal to the pass depth of the tool that you have selected. We have the option to profile around each one of those levels, either before it actually cuts the level, which is quite helpful if you have a brittle material and you're worried about chipping around the edges. We can profile after it's done that level. And both of these options will give you a nice clean edge, which may or may not be needed for your particular job. Or you can choose none if you'd like to. For right now, I'm going to go back and choose last. You also have the option of choosing the order. You can go level by level, which progressively your roughing toolpath will cut through your material that past depth across all of your 3D content that you have, and then it will move to the next past step or to the next level. Depth first will tell your software to cut down through all the different levels in one area before it moves on to the next. For right now, we're going to go down back to level by level. We can also choose the raster angle that we'd like to. In some cases, you might want to modify that based on the material that you're using. For right now, we'll just leave that at zero. You can also choose to add in ramp plunge moves, which will help alleviate some of the stress on your CNC machine and prolong the life of your tool. 
Your home and safe Z positions are based on your material setup. You also have the option of using the vector selector. I'll leave a related video below on that if you'd like to explore that more. And then of course you can give your tool path a name. We're just gonna go ahead and calculate that. And you'll see in our 3D view, we have a nice wireframe of that. And if we preview our visible toolpath, you'll see how it's going to step down through each level. Also do a profile cut around each level before it moves to the next. And we end up having a nice roughing toolpath ready for a finishing toolpath. Let's just go ahead and reset that preview. And let's close this down and go back into our toolpath again. Now let's have a look at the 3D raster options. Unlike with the Z level, which you're pocketing through your material, a 3D raster will actually follow the 3D profile of your 3D content. You'll notice right away that we lose the option of profile and order, but we gain the option of avoid machined areas. If we decide to turn this on, what will happen is the software will avoid areas that's already cut. This may or may not actually speed up the cutting of your toolpath. So it'd be good to make note of that. Again, we can choose a raster angle. And let's just go ahead and recalculate that. And let's preview this visible toolpath. And you'll see how now it's following the actual 3D shape of our 3D content, giving us a different style of roughing toolpath, but again, ready to go ahead and create that 3D finishing toolpath. At this point, we've gone through all of the different options of the 3D roughing toolpath. If you'd like more information, you can go ahead and choose the help up here in the corner. And I hope with that, you can have a better understanding of how to use the 3D roughing toolpath.